Paul, welcome back. Thank you for being here. Always a pleasure to be here, Joe. Now, we're going to talk about a word called FODMAPs. It's a bit of a mouthful, so I'm hoping you can break it down for us and give us a really clear understanding. It, it sure is. So I mean, FODMAPs in itself isn't so, uh, so scary, but when we say what it actually stands for, which is a fermentable oligosaccharide, monosaccharide, disaccharides and polyols, it sure uh, becomes intimidating. But it's actually not that complex, because basically all it represents is sugars, mm -hmm of at least two molecules joined together, or polyols, which is what we call a sugar alcohol, which is a, an artificial sweetener that we often see in Atkins bar, things like erythritol or melatol. Mm -hmm. And the thing that they have in common, these sugars joined together or the sugar alcohols, are that in some people, they're not very well absorbed. So after you eat it and digest it, it travels down through your intestines. Uh, to be absorbed, they need to be cleaved or split apart. And if you lack the necessary enzymes to split them apart in terms of the sugars, or indeed you just don't have them because the sugar alcohols are designed in a way that we're not naturally able to absorb them, then they pass all the way through to the colon where they can be fermented by the bacteria. And when they're fermented by bacteria, that produces gas production, you'll get a sense of bloating, and you also get what we call osmotic effects, where these undigested molecules will attract fluid. Mm -hmm. And it's actually been shown that these FODMAPs are strongly linked to the symptoms of irritable bowel syndrome. So you'll get the loose stools, and you'll also, almost paradoxically, get symptoms of bloating and constipation at the same time. And it's very useful if we understand that often on a low carbohydrate or a ketogenic diet, some of the foods we have can actually be very, very high in these substances. So it's, uh, and it's very similar to fibre as well. If you've, uh, we've talked about fibre in the past and we understand that when you uh, eat fibre, it travels down to the colon and that also produces gas. So the combination of fibre mm -hmm. and FODMAPs can, even if you're on a healthy, high-fat ketogenic diet, through inadvertent consumption of both of these substances can lead to a significant gastrointestinal distress. So, Paul, with that, what kind of foods come under these FODMAPs? Well, in terms of a low-carb or a ketogenic diet, unfortunately, it's some of the staple foods which we often consume. So cauliflower is both rich in fibre and in FODMAPs, and you've got nuts and berries, which are also rich in either fibre or FODMAPs, and there's a few other foods as well. So this is the reason why people may find they have troubles with bloating or gastrointestinal symptoms when they go on a keto diet, and it's, uh, it's due to excess fibre or excess FODMAPs. And cutting these down, for a lot of people, it's not an all or nothing proposition, mm -hmm. but once we just get you below the threshold of what your body can handle, people will just trial an elimination or a reduction, and often their symptoms just disappear. Oh, what a great place to be able to start, though, just knowing those things. Thank you so much. Very welcome.